Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Good morning, everybody. It is February 19th, 2020, and I'm Matt Hall with your latest installment of KSO Today. KSO Today is brought to you by both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance Solutions. And we also want to thank Tallgrass Tap House, where we'll be this coming Friday, uh, not on Thursday, for our next full-length edition of the KSO Show. That'll be Friday at 7 p.m. at the Tallgrass Tap House. We are pushing back recording of that show uh, a day due to some travel this week as D.Y. Flendo and myself are headed to St. Louis for the next couple of days to check out K-State Hoop signees Davion Bradford and Luke Kasubke. We'll see Luke this evening um, as his Chaminade team, I believe, is on the road. They're playing Althoff Catholic, still there in St. Louis. Thursday night, we'll check out Melville High. That's Davion Bradford's team there at home against Rockwood Summit. Um, we'll look to share full game highlights, you know, specifically of Luke and Davion, of course, and interviews with both of K-State's signees from St. Louis at KSO over the next couple of days. Uh, Davion Bradford, of course, was re- recently given a four-star not long ago, it has received a nice amount of praise uh, from Rivals National Recruiting Analyst Eric Bossy on his game the last few times Mr. Bossy has seen him. So it's going to be fun for us to go see the seven-footer in person uh, ourselves to try to get a real sense of where he's at with his game right now. Uh, many who have seen him believe he's done a lot of great work on his body and has made pretty significant improvement over the last you know few months. Um, Eric Bossy will be one of those people. So it'll be cool to see it ourselves and see how he's doing. Luke Kasub, on the other hand, is the lowest rated of K-State's four high school signees, but he's still uh, a Rivals 150 member. And he's had a few instances over the last couple of years of 40, you know, 50 point type outbursts from a pure shooting scoring, you know, watching highlights perspective. His game may be the more interesting of the two. So we'll be excited to see both of those guys. And again, it is Luke Kasubke this evening. So you can expect to see his highlights and interviews either late tonight, probably more likely early tomorrow morning. And then we'll be seeing Davion Bradford the next night in St. Louis. K-State, of course, plays at Texas Tech tonight. We obviously won't be down there in Lubbock. Um... Uh, to cover that one because we'll be in St. Louis tonight. But we will still have full coverage of that on KSO this evening. I was on, I think it's the Double T 97.3 in Lubbock yesterday talking about this game. Uh, Of course, Texas Tech at home is going to be very, very difficult to beat. They still have a lot of respect for the Wildcats. Chris Beard in particular does. So they'll take K-State very, very seriously. I think K-State's going to have an awfully tough time um, down in Lubbock. It's a team that did get up 15 on K- up fifteen or more here on K-State in Manhattan. The Wildcats, like most games, came back, and I think they even maybe took a one-point lead or got down by one. I can't remember if they came all the way over the hump or not in the second half. They got rid of the deficit, I know, but Tech still pulled back and won. Now on the road in Lubbock with K-State playing, to be quite honest, Worse than they were at that point, I think this is going to be a rough one for the Wildcats tonight. Aside from that, it's been a big few days on the site. Uh, And this morning, the newest piece of content we have is Derek Young's Class of 2021 Recruiting Preview for Quarterbacks and Safeties. Um, If I haven't really explained those series to you, what DUI does, and he's done it now for every position, you can go back and read them. He kind of links them cleverly in his stories. Uh, He just gives you a look at pretty much everybody k-state's recruiting at a particular position for the class of 2021 of course that's the names right now we know over the course of a recruiting season there'll be dozens of names added in but you can get a sense right now of who to watch at each spot for the class of 2021 dy teaches you who's coming back on the roster gives you a look at the roster as a whole at that position tells you how many recruits we believe they needed that position and then gives you a list of those recruits so he's done it for every spot now this is actually the last one so at least i'm explaining how it worked once we got to the very last one of them but you can go back and read them they do have good shelf life they'll be interesting throughout the entire recruiting season but this morning you can see the recruiting preview up for cornerback safeties defensive backs um on top of that work from dy within the last few days he's given his linebacker preview so the same thing i just descri- described for linebackers an update on big i think six foot four wide receiver ty robinson he had his new recruiting big board i think on monday and then back on saturday his recruiting notebook so over the past three or four days he's shared all those things with you um, and of course, he's heading with us to St. Louis tonight to help with that. So really appreciate DY. Aside from that, if you have missed Flando's piece on Selton Miguel, which released free on k Online yesterday, maybe take some time to check it out. I thought it was pretty good work by Flando. Um, it was really neat that he did that. A number of quotes in there from Selton himself, as well as his coach on the type of year. You know, the four-star K-State signee who's now in the top 100 by rivals has had. It's been a really big season for him. Really special. There's a lot to read about there, I think, and see. West Oaks did finish its regular season last night. 
which is why Flanders wanted to get that story out because it was their regular season finale yesterday. They did get a win. It's been a great year for them. Uh, hopefully there's a lot much, uh, a lot left, you know, for Selton this season and the postseason, and perhaps some all-star game participation after that. You know, we're about five minutes in, but this is not going to be a terribly long edition of KSO today this morning. I really wanted to use it to give you an update on our travel, where we're heading, and what you can see on the site the next couple of days. I do also want to get on the road, I mean, pretty much obnoxiously early to avoid any possible St. Louis traffic issues costing us this game tonight. So once I get done with this, I'm going to get it edited and put up and hit the road with those guys. If you haven't already subscribed to our free YouTube channel, please hit that red subscribe button on the bottom right of your screen. It really does help us out. Maybe even suggest the same to a friend. And then if you aren't a paying member to case it online, I would appreciate it if you'd take just a second to consider it. Um, as there's a lot I, I really intentionally leave off of here, you know, that I want to sell on our website and let that be for our paying subscribers um, that I don't talk about here on a daily basis. You know, for example, DY's got a list of every football recruiting visit and when they're scheduled. It's a pretty uh, thorough list on the message board right now. And there's so much content from DY and Flando they share on there that I don't talk about on KSO today that you are missing if you're not a subscriber there. So you can still get a lot from us on YouTube and just listening to this. We appreciate you following us anywhere you do, whether you're paying us or not. It's very much appreciated, but we would love your business as well. Okay, I think that's enough pitching for now. I need to get ready to get on the road. Thank you again for your time. Thanks for listening to KSO today and have a fantastic Wednesday.